people here. I'm going to leave everybody unmuted this morning because I don't have a huge crowd. And uh, to do the required paperwork that I have to do up front, um, <laughs> thank you for stopping by. Uh, we're going to talk about correction, uh, lens correction, spot removal, and I think I'm going to be able to have enough time to talk a little bit about some uh, lens transformations we can do. Now, as always, I'm going to let you know that the store is open for phone calls from 10 to 4 Monday through Friday, and we're 10 to 3 on weekends now or on Saturday. We'll close on Sunday. And you can arrange for curbside pickup as well as um, if you uh, need any print processing done there, they're still processing film and, uh, and prints. So, you know, don't be a stranger. And hopefully we're going to figure out how to get the store back open so people can walk in when the state gets in a better shape here with this COVID-19. But this morning, let's play with Lightroom. So let me share my screen. And when that pops up. Give me half a second to do a little, get my participant window open here and get my chat window open. So if you have any other questions, don't, don't hesitate to use the chat window and send me, uh, send me a message. I've got them open on, uh, on my other monitor so I can see everything coming in. You should see my screen right now. Is that correct? Everybody sees Lightroom? Yes. Yes. Okay. That was a riveting picture I took there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we do three shows a week. <laughs> uh, let's start out with lens correction. How many of you have been using or know how to use the lens correction feature in Lightroom? The kind of. Okay, kind of. Well, we're, we're going to walk through it here. One of the cool things is, is that every lens, unless you're paying a billion dollars for a lens, every lens that's out there has some of its own little idiosyncrasies in terms of how they are built. And Lightroom builds in uh, the ability to do lens correction. It works best. I, I believe it will work on JPEGs to a point, but it works absolutely best when you are shooting in RAW. So we have this picture here. It's kind of a lackluster, no-brainer picture, but it was taken because it means something to a friend of mine. His, his uh, grandfather passed away in this corner of a, a little pasture area he had, um, a little pen in area. He used to play out there, and when he passed away, I got the ability to go and take a number of pictures of the of the farm before anybody touched anything. So I, I kind of documented the way that it was left. And in this little corner, he used to play with his trucks and stuff. So he asked me to take this picture. But something I want you to see here is if I pull this corner up, do you notice how I have some magenta hanging here and some cyan hanging here on that post? Everybody see that okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what happens is that's called lens aberration. And when the light comes back through and it's refracting through the different elements of the lens and coming back and joining together to focus on your sensor, sometimes at the edges of lenses, they don't quite come together absolutely perfectly. So in the right hand column here in the develop module, there is a lens correction panel. And that lens correction panel is going to be your best friend. So what you can do is you can tell it to remove chromatic aberration. And all I'm going to do is click on the, the little checkbox here for removing chromatic aberration and watch what happens. Almost instantly, it goes away. So I'm going to turn it off and back on. I wonder if I made it a little bit bigger. So let's make it two to one. And we'll turn it off mm -hmm. and turn it on. So what that does is that corrects it. Now, the, the crazy thing is, is on this particular image, I had made a print of it and it wasn't super noticeable to the average person looking at it, but I saw it and every time I saw that print, it drove me crazy. So I went over to his house and I took, I had made a print to replace <laughs> it. I went and picked up his print, ripped it in half and threw it out and then handed him the new one. He didn't see the difference between the two, but it was just driving me totally nuts. But you'll see if you're doing like landscapes where you've got trees and different things in the in the uh, in the distance, how that is going to help improve the sharpness of your image and make it look a lot better. The second thing is that every lens has certain light characteristics and, and fall off patterns. So, for example, if I hit now the enable uh, profile correction, because of it being um, 
in raw, and this being in the metadata, it knew that it was a Tamron 10 to 24 lens, and it pulled up the appropriate profile. So I, when I do that, I want you to look at the outer edges of this image and see how it's going to flatten them out. Plus then it's adding a little bit of light at the outer image edges of the image in order to bring that image back to uh, more of an even um, exposure. So we're going to kick it off and kick it on. See how it just pulls those edges back up, corrects for that. Now, if your lens is not, if you don't see your lens, you can come over here and through the drop down menu, pick the brand of lens. So let's say it was a Nikon lens I was looking at, and then I can come in and I can then pick from the list of all the Nikon lenses, and it's going to put the appropriate profile in for me. I'm going to go back to take it out. Oh, I'm going to have to bring it back because I overrode it. There we go. Um, so if, if, if you, know, you can also, I have, not, I have not done it, but I've heard of people doing it. Um, you can also use that to play around and get different effects. If you're looking for a different effect uh, and you want to play around with the, uh, the lens correction, it will give you some different, um, a different look. So this is a real helpful tool. Um, I, I think I think the most dramatic thing, though, is still looking at what happens when you do the removing the chromatic aberration. To me, that's hey, a, Dave. Yeah, this is Jackie. So I have a question because I'm not seeing on the screen when you pulled up the um, like the lens correction. What are you clicking on? Okay, let's go back and do that again. So when I enable the okay in your in your develop module do you have yep. lens correction okay as one of the as one of your choices yep okay then basically all i do is when i come into the lens correction i have to enable it so to enable it you can you can just enable the lens correction if you want and not enable the chromatic aberration but to my way of thinking if you know do the chromatic aberration whether you think you need it or not because that really does does help out are you saying oh. it out I think what's happening is on my right hand side, I see everybody's pictures, but I'm not seeing what you're doing on the right hand side. Uh, you can move those people, you can move their pictures. Okay. If you grab a hold of the top of the, uh, of the, uh, of the bar up there, there should be little icons. There's a, like you can collapse them, you can do them as a grid, you can do them all sorts of different ways. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I just want to make sure everybody, you know, sees and gets what they need out of this. Oh, now I see where you're at. I can see it now. Thank you. Okay. Again, Dave. Yeah. This is Linda. Could I ask one quick question? Sure. It, does the list of lenses come up only if the the uh, file is raw, or if it's a JPEG? Will they? Will it come up as well? Uh, that's a good question. Let me see. Do I have any JPEG images in here? Uh, do I have any JPEG? I have a JPEG image. Let's pull a JPEG image up. Let's tell it to remove chromatic aberration and enable it. Uh, it looks like they will come up. But you're going to have to then go in and try to to pick the lens, and you it it's going to be more limited because of the fact uh, the JPEG uh, is not maintaining all okay. the rest of the information. So you can pick the make and, but you won't have the list of models to choose from like you did when it was in RAW. Right. Okay. So, so okay. like if I go to Sigma now, it's going to give me just a few Sigma lenses to choose from. Okay where if I'm in raw, it's going to give me a much larger selection. I, again, okay. it's one of the benefits. Yeah, I, I have a hard time justifying, justifying shooting in, in JPEG just because of the fact it's so much more powerful. And right. it's easier to throw something out instead of wish you had something you didn't have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, thank you very much. Hey, no problem. 
Okay, so we're going hey, back Dave? to one. Yeah. Uh, John Glowacki here. Um, yeah. I have kind of a, a, some obtuse question. Um, it's more of a Nikon question, perhaps. The uh, Nikon 14 to 30 S lens um, at 14 millimeters, it's not quite a fisheye, but it's almost a fisheye. Right. Um, it's automatically corrected when you, if you look at the images in Photoshop or Lightroom, they're automatically corrected for lens, um, you know, distortions at the wide angle. Right. Is there, is there a way to view that image without those corrections? Um, I believe there is, and it's probably going to be something you have to go into the preferences and turn off. Oh, okay. So some, some cameras, Dave, are some cameras doing that correction in body? Some are, but I don't believe Nikon's doing that. Which body are you shooting on? It's a Z6. Okay, it might be doing it in body on that one. Yeah. I kind of kind of thought that I understood that it was, but I don't know if there's a way to... I'm, I'm sure there's a preference in there you can go in and turn off. And if you've got a problem, just go to the Nikon helpline, you know, NikonUSA.com okay. or whatever. And... and and I'm sure there's a forum out there somewhere that would, would give you that information. I'll, yeah, because sometimes I want it to be crazy. Now, in that, in that case, there's also this. If I go to manual here in the lens correction, I can come in and change the distortion at will. I can come in and do the defringing and how much of vignettes, you know, at will. So you can do some, some crazy things, too, if you want to. So if you if you wanted to really distort or undistort your your image, you have an option here. But the profiles are are built so strong that they, you know, they just do a great job. Let's let's reset that. There we go. They do a good job. So anyway, I, I, I highly recommend that you play around with this and try it. The, uh, the lens correction will make a big difference on, on a lot of your images. Um, you know, Ra Randall just, is, are these rotating backgrounds now? <laughs> no, I just, I just wasn't feeling all that flowery this morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good job, okay. Randall. <laughs> let's, let's move on to the next part of it, and that's spot removal. Um, no one in this group, I'm sure, ever has this problem, but if it ever happens to you because, you know, for some reason you decided to go out on a really windy day and you uh, decide to uh, get dirt and dust in, your, in one of your images, um, it happens a couple different ways. One is if you've got your lens stopped way, way down, like F22 or so, F29 I was shooting at the other day, um, this one looks like I was shot at f32. Some of that dirt might actually be on my my lens on the uh, front element of the lens, and others might be on my sensor. So uh, it does happen. It was a really cold day that day. I was like going, "Why the hell am I out here?" But I was anyway, and I was having some fun. And I took a couple pictures in order to to create some dirty images to show people. What I want you to see is these two images are from the same day in a different time. And yeah. if you notice, I'm going to zoom in on this upper corner here. And if you notice, between the two images, I've got the same spots. So if you ever go on vacation or you go somewhere and you find yourself shooting and uh, you've got a, a number of random spots, the spot removal tool here is going to be your friend. So it's called spot removal. It's in the upper right hand corner. It's under the histogram. It's right next to your crop tool. And it's real easy to use. So what we're going to do is we can tell it to visualize spots down in the bottom here. You've got a little menu. You can hit visualize spots and then you can adjust how much of a spot you want to see. I'm going to put it pretty much in the middle for this demonstration. What I then do is I make sure it's in the heel mode. So I've got my brush size. I've made my brush a little bit bigger than the spot I want to work on. I've got it feathered a little bit and I'm using heel, not clone. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and I'm going to paint over the top of these little spots. 
And all I do is I'm just clicking on them so that the spot will go away. We'll do a few more here just because we can. And now I'm going to unclick the visualize spots. Oh, I missed one. I'll put it there. There we go. And then if I say done, you're going to see that those spots had all gone away. So now if I look at before and after, you can see the spots were there, the spots are gone. And if we zoom in a little bit and bring it down, and you can see, oh, I missed one. So let's turn it on and come in here and make the brush a little bit smaller. I have to catch it on the edge there. There we go. Done. Anyway, what I'm able to do is knock those spots out. So I'm going to go back to a full size image. They, it just, it works so well, but here's the cool thing. Here's the next image that's got all the spots on it. They're in the same spots on my sensor, correct? So if I just click on the word previous here at the bottom of my right hand tool panel, it's going to take any correction I did to the image before and apply it to this next image. I didn't do any editing in terms of, of contrast or exposure or color balance. All I'm going to do is hit previous. And all those same spots were then removed in that image also. So if you find yourself out on a shoot, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this one because I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. So if you find yourself out and you know you've gone through and and uh, you've shot a hundred images and they all have spots in them, edit the spots out of your first image, and then what you can do is select all the image that is that you want to correct and go in and use sync. It's going to give you a menu of the items you want to sync. So I'm going to say check none for right now. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and hit spot removal. I don't know if you can see that. Make sure that it's in the frame. I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to do it again. So I selected the images I wanted. I hit sync. I'm going to check none. I'm just going to check the spot removal. That's the only one I want. And then I'm going to hit synchronize. And what that will do is that will take all the spot removals I did in this first image and apply it to any other images I had. So if I had 30 images, 50 images, five images, whatever I had there, it's going to apply that same spot removal, all those images. Is that from the, the day that you shot all those images or did that go all the way back? No, that's going to be for any particular group of images because okay. um, what may happen is, is that you may have shot on one day and then had your, you know, uh, maybe you cleaned your lens Okay. And you got rid of half your spots or the next day you went out and you changed your lens and got another spot on your sensor. It's basically going to synchronize to whatever group you're working with. I don't recommend trying to apply it across my whole catalog, but just, you know, just the few from a particular shoot. Has anyone well, used this method before? No. Is this going to be helpful? Anybody? Am I the only one that ever gets spots on, on my images by accident? <laughs> I've I've used this technique a lot over the years, and it's it's very helpful. Do you synchronize or do you use the previous button when you, you synchronize? I like because I can cherry pick across a film strip of images. Versus previous will only do the image that was just right before it as you're going through your images. Well, I I have used both. Um, however, I usually find myself just correcting the spots on each individual image. Um, a lot of times if I'm doing macro work or I am using a very large number F stop, there's a lot of spots. Yep, you can, you can pick them up. Now here, here's something else to keep in mind. Let's say for example, you did apply that across a whole bunch of images. If on this particular image, I've got a spot I don't like, or I need to remove it. All I do is I come back and pull, open up the spot removal tool again, and then I can go to any of the spots that I had corrected, if I select that particular spot and hit delete, if I select that particular spot, you see you got to select it first, and then hit delete, it'll take that particular spot removal off. So maybe 
in some case it didn't quite get where you wanted to go or maybe you see you've got another one here that you didn't realize you can come in and just hit that one right away and and take care of it so the idea is is that it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting and you can get a lot of accomplished without having to you know if you've got 100 images and you've got to do spot removal on 100 images it's going to take you a long time but if you apply this across everything and then go back through and then just touch up the ones you need to touch up it will make your job a lot easier Hi, Dave. This is Jan. Yeah, Jan. If you have like a, a facial picture that you could show, I I really would like, I have spots like, you know, like acne spots, whatever on my kids' faces and stuff. Yep. Could you show, do you still use the heel? Could you show how you do it on a face? Yep. We're just, we'll just pull up. Uh, I, I don't know what else I might have in here for, let's see if maybe one of these will work. By the way, by the way, this is really cool to do this, like zoom here. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you appreciate it. Here we go. We're gonna zoom in. And we're gonna go way in and she'd be totally upset if she saw me doing this. So please don't uh -huh. share this video with her. She can find it herself if she wants to. Anyway. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> here's the deal. You can use the heel tool and there's she's got a little bit of a mark here on her nose, a little bit of a freckle. We want to take that out. You yeah. just put it on there and just give it a tap and it will find another one. If you don't like what it picked you can come in and you can grab and move that. So what it's doing is it's creating an area to fill and a source. And you'll see that there's a little arrow pointing. So it's saying, whatever is here, I'm going to put over here. Let me show you on a different image. It, it works the same way. Let's go back to with my heel, my heel clone. And then we're going to break up this nice lady again. And yeah, she's I pick, cute. <laughs> I pick on her all the time. You know, she's got a little spot here on her chin, right? So what we'll do is we'll just come in and I make the brush just fit it and I can put it over there. And let's say I want to get rid of this little freckle she has here on the side. You know, I can do that. She's got a little mark on her lip here. I can take that out. Oh. Um, you know, so, you know, if this was acne, it would work the same way. You could go in and, and easily just make those changes. There's something else that you use this for. Um, those of you who do, I got to get out of this first. There we go. Um, you know, I've, I've got this image here and I don't know how well you can see, but the, let's see, I don't want to go there. I'll go one to one. That makes it easier to look at. Um, you know, there are some spots that ended up on my, on my sensor. So I can just go in and knock those out real quick. You know, they, you know, they probably don't make any difference if you're showing them on a, you know, a screen to somebody, but if you're going to print these, these will show up and they'll, they'll drive you absolutely crazy. Um, there's a bird right here that I didn't see when I originally shot, uh, or I, when I was looking at this image originally, let's pull this down to get to that bird. You know, it looks like a dust spot in the sky. I don't really care about that. I want that to go away so I can just knock that bird out. Uh, <laughs> It is too cool, too easy. Now, the other fun thing you can do is this is let's say, for example, I've got, you know, I got another bird here. He's driving me crazy. We'll make him go away. Um, if I didn't like this kid here, I could just come in and, you know, I got to go a little bit wider on him. I tried to cut it too tight. Are you still in the heel mode there then? I'm still in the heel mode. Now here's the thing, the heel and the clone, what heel mode is going to do is it's going to go out and try to find something of similar um, contrast content in order to, um, you know, fill that space. What I can also do is I can use the clone tool. So I'm going to flip it off and I'm going to click over to clone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take my feather down just a little bit. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint over this kid. I got too tight. Do that again. Okay. And now again, see this arrow. It's pointing, it's taking what's on the right hand side and filling what's on the left. So if I, all I have to do is hover in that particular box and I can move that. And then I can come over and grab this other box, slide it back. And now what I've done is I've put a second kid jumping so we could have synchronized jumping here. <laughs> so when you say hover, Dave, what do you mean? Are you, you're just moving within that first box? 
Yeah, as soon as, as soon as you go into that box, it becomes, and you click on it and drag, you can then move that, that particular area that you've highlighted to wherever you want it to go. Okay. To turn the circle into the box, do you just hold down and drag? Yep. Yep. Just hold down and drag. Let's do, let's do this. So, you know, you've got a bird here. Maybe you want to make more birds. One of the things that I can do is this. I can come over here and I'm using the, the clone. And I just click. And now it's making another bird for me. So let's come here and make another bird. Although I've put the bird into a, get it so it blends in a little bit better. So I've got three birds instead of the, the one I started with. Can you change that size of the bird? No. Okay. So here's the thing. This tool is really powerful when it comes to doing, uh, I think it was you, Jan, that was asking about doing um, take, you know, uh, blemish removal in portraits. Yes. It's great for doing that. It's great for taking spots out. It does not replace, and this is where I get yelled at all the time, and you know, I'm sure anybody that watches this video, please go ahead and send me some nasty grams. Um, this is where I say that Photoshop is a wonderful plug-in for Lightroom because you can do 99% of your heavy lifting here in, in Lightroom. And then on those occasions where you want to do super editing in terms of cloning and uh, other types of, of uh, image editing, you then can just right click on your image and say edit in Lightroom and it'll take it right out to Lightroom. You edit it when you're done, you hit save and it puts it right back into Lightroom's architecture for organization. So, um, I, you know, again, my, my running gag is, is that Photoshop is a great plugin for Lightroom, but you know, I mean, I use Photoshop all the time. It's a great tool. I just really like Lightroom's organizational structure and it, and it helps me as a photographer keep my, keep myself sane because I can go back and find things easy. So, Lens correction, use it all the time. Heel clone tool, practice and play with it. It takes some, it takes some time to get used to. Um, one of the biggest things is, is that when I've got it open here is adjusting the size of your brush to make it work, playing with your feather and playing with opacity. Um, you know, you can, you can change those on the fly. <clears throat> Any one of these that I click on, you're gonna see how it just became a bold line and a brighter line. These, these two are a little less bright. This is the active one right now. So if I don't like it, I just hit the delete key and that particular one goes away. Take a little time and practice with it. It can be really, really a, a big help, especially if you're shooting, you know, you, you do some nice night skies and you got a sunset and all of a sudden you got two great big old blemishes in there because you got a piece of dust or a bug landed on the front of your lens or whatever it may be, um, or you got some dirt on your sensor. You don't have to hey, lose the picture, you can fix it. Dave, a question. Yeah. If you're uh, trying to get reflections out of uh, people's eyeglasses, let's say a group photo, uh, would you use the heel tool? That's, that's a good question. That's a little tougher um, because the thing is, is that you have to have something, if you're using the heel tool, the way this is working is, it is taking another part of the image and putting it into another part of the image. Now you do have the ability to, I'm gonna just do this real quick. I'm going to make this one go away. And I had something going on there and I'm gonna to go to clone and I'm gonna make the opacity now only about 40% or 30 some percent. Oh, actually let's do it the right way. I want that bird to be, there we go. So you can see what I can do is I can change the opacity of the image that I'm cloning and putting into another space. So when you're doing glasses, you might want to take your opacity and lower it a bit and use another part of the glasses or maybe, you know, if the left lens had the, the problem, the right lens didn't, um, you know, grab your, your sample from the opposite lens and put it on there and then take that uh, opacity down a little bit so it doesn't look too you know, too much like you tried to paste something in there and force it into place. Um, I hate to say this, but the best thing to do is try not to get the reflections when you shoot the portraits or you shoot the images. 
Yeah, I know. 